Well, hello there everybody, how you all doing today? I hope you're all keeping well and I hope you're all keeping safe. Happy New Year, hard to believe. 2023 already, where has the time gone? Hope you all had an amazing holiday season and I hope you've all recovered from the uh, <laughs> the New Year celebrations. So we've got a new year, we've got a new video and if you just so happen to be new to the channel, hi, my name is Mark, I'm a photographer from Northern Ireland. I mostly specialise in music photography but I also love to cover things like landscapes and portraits, just I like to keep myself well and truly open. So I do appreciate that you have come to check out this video you can head into my channel and check out more photography related topics and while you're there why not hit the subscribe button while you're at it it's always greatly appreciated that you come and check out the channel so it's safe to say that I've done photography for quite a while now <laughs> crazy to believe and I get asked so many different questions on a day-to-day -day basis especially whenever it comes to music photography it's great to see so many new and up-and-coming photographers that want to get into this field whether it's how do I actually get out there or how do I get my first photo pass but well, I cover some of these topics already which you can hit in the top right hand corner there. But today I wanted to talk about when you're actually in the field and what way you get your camera set up for this type of environment because music photography is quite a tricky subject to work in. It's not like doing a landscape where you know you're out and about, okay, F8, F11, gives me all my detail, tripods, whatever, or if I'm doing a portrait, F1.8, blur out background, bokeh, all that sort of thing. You're working in a much more tricky your environment because everything is low light. You could be working in a venue where there's only like a couple of lights or you could be working in an arena where there is lights galore. So I wanted to talk about general settings to use whenever you're out doing music photography, cover some of the things that I tend to use personally, but also just tell you as to why you should use some of these settings whenever you are out doing a gig or anything. Now let's first talk about shutter speed. So shutter speed is all about how light gets into your camera via that little door that you feel clicking up and down and making all the clicky noises and all as well. You generally want your shutter to be not ridiculously fast, but fast enough. The reason why I say that is if you have it too fast for such a dark environment, you might darken down your shot and then you have to use other parts of the things that we're going to talk about in this video that could actually ruin your photo but you also then don't want it to be too slow where you're going to get a lot of motion blur especially if it's like a very fast moving band like a metal band that are constantly going all about the stage for me personally i like to shoot anywhere between 125th of a second to 250th of a second if i'm shooting an indoor venue because i find that that's a nice sweet spot for not the motion blur, but still fast enough to capture a bit of freezing with my moving subjects. Now, if I'm shooting outdoor, like at a festival or even like an arena where subjects are a little bit brighter, I have a bit more room to make my shutter a bit faster because you tend to find a lot of these sort of different venues might be a lot brighter. There's more lights and all involved. So I'll tend to go at least up to about 400th of a second for the likes of an arena or an outdoor gig because there's more room for light and to make things a little bit faster. That being said, you can get a little bit creative with your shutter speed. Like if you do actually have quite a fast moving band that are like head banging and things, you can slow down your shutter speed a little bit more so that way the motion blur could actually look pretty cool where you have all the movement going on I tend to not do it a lot these days. I used to do it whenever I was starting out because uh, it just gave me a different style, a different look. I tend not to do it too much these days because I'm not really a big fan of that myself. But if you want to do that sort of creative sort of look and creative sort of, it can actually look really cool. Next, I want to talk about aperture. So aperture is all about how much light comes into your camera via the lens through F numbers and F stops. You'll probably see like a little F number on the bottom of your screen on your camera. Basically, all that means is when you see that F number, the smaller the number, 
the larger your aperture will be so it's letting in more light whereas the larger the number the smaller your aperture is going to be so it's letting in less light but generally introduces a lot more detail so for me when it comes to concert photography i'll want to have as much light as possible being let in personally i like to stick anywhere between f 2.8 and f4 you can open up a lot more if you have a lens that has like an f 1.8 or a 1.4 like some of the prime lenses give you that where again it's letting in more light you'll get a nicer sort of depth of field and out of focus look and all as well but for me personally 2.8 works the best for me because most of my lenses can only open up def 2.8 but i find this is a nice happy medium because the reason why i i personally don't like to do f 1.8 and f 1.4 gigs is because especially if it's a moving subject you can miss focus a little bit easier on those whereas 2.8 is a nice is a nice comfortable spot whereas if it's an outdoor gig or an arena again brighter conditions sometimes i can shoot at f4 where i can close down a little just a little bit introduce a wee bit more detail but also some lenses i have used before in the past didn't have 2.8 they were just f4 but that was still comfortable enough for me with the likes of some of the venues so if you do have an f4 lens that's still okay for music photography but if you have something that opens up a little bit wider that's even better because you want this light being allowed in as much as possible lastly i wanted to talk about iso and this is the one thing that i tend to change the most whenever it comes to music photography iso is all about how sensitive you make your light to your sensor so this can range anywhere between about iso 100 all the way up to 25,600. Think of it like film. The lower your ISO number, like say a 100, 200, was good for like brighter days whereas like an ISO 3200 was more for like darker conditions or was known as a faster film because you can use faster shutter speeds with that so I take that same sort of principle with this. ISO is the one that I change the most because lighting can change so I'll always set my shutter and my aperture as it is and I'll change my ISO depending on the lighting situation and this can range between ISO 1600 to 3200. This is a nice comfortable spot again for myself because it's not too low where I'm going to then need to think about my shutter and my aperture and it's not like bright enough but it's also not ridiculously high where the thing about playing with ISO is you'll start to introduce noise and grey into your shot which sometimes can look pretty cool but in other times it can actually destroy your shot so this is where I find 1600 to 3200 a nice comfortable position for music photography but I'll change my ISO as I go along throughout the gig because you find that support bands might not have the best of light whereas the main band are going to have much more brighter setups so you could find that the support band I'll have to raise my sensitivity a little bit more whereas the main band I'll have to lower down because they're going to be a little bit brighter so these are the main things that I tend to look out for with music photography but there is some other things that you can also use that will help you out as well and that is things like your file formats shoot in raw the reason why i say shoot in raw versus jpeg is that raw opens up a lot more detail opens up a lot more dynamic range whenever it comes to editing so you get as much detail as possible it's just like i used to shoot jpeg whenever i started out and it was fine but you get the most detail out of a raw shot so if you can shoot in raw shoot in raw and jpeg and then compare the two of them side by side if you do want to see what each of them do on your editing process. The reason why I shoot in RAW as well is because you also have options of changing your white balance. So you can put in your own white balance on the camera. This is where you say if you want your shot to look a bit warmer or colder. I tend to keep my white balance at daylight because I find this is a wee bit warmer, but because I shoot in RAW, I can change this it gives me more flexibility so if I'm editing I can make it colder or warmer but I've got a nice little base point for myself there your autofocus you'll tend to maybe want to set your camera up to AFC you'll find this in your menu where you can go AFA AFS or AFC AFS is handy for single shooting, whereas AFC means that your autofocus is continuously autofocusing. So if you do have a moving subject, it'll track along a lot better rather than being an AFS where it's just gonna lock in the one place and 
somebody moves and you've missed the shot, whereas AFC will follow along, especially with newer cameras now where autofocus has gotten so much better. You want your AFC to be on where tracking can be a lot quicker. And naturally, you'll also then want to have your continuous shooting on. So this is all within your drive mode or your drive menu. So whether that's a menu on your camera or you might have a little dial up on top where you can have single shots or continuous shooting. Sometimes they'll be listed as continuous high or continuous low. So you'll naturally want to be you know we like to say spray and pray <laughs> so that way you're not taking like one shot at a time you're probably taking quite a few all these little things here and there can really help out your music photography because again you want to think and think about you know a lot of these sort of subjects are moving. So things like the tracking and the continuous shooting means that you're not gonna miss a shot at all, or you'll have a better chance at not missing a shot. Now, I know I've probably shouted out a lot of different numbers and different sort of terms and all like that. If you're still not comfortable with aperture, shutter, and ISO, and you're still really learning about what this does to your photograph, well, again, I've got videos up in the top right hand corner that breaks down each one bit by bit even more detail. I do hope this video was helpful for you if it was or if there's certain settings that you yourself like to use well please let me know in the comments down below it'd be great to hear your opinions and of course while you're down there why not like share and hit that wee subscribe button so that you can stay up to date with future videos it's always greatly appreciated that you come and check out the channel but hitting that subscribe button not only supports the channel but it keeps you guys up to date with any sort of future videos that are happening here. But until then, everyone, take it easy. Have a good one.